G'day, you're back at the lab. So, the march there. I threatened some cool things we're going to turn up, some shiny things. A couple of boxes arrived this morning. Now, if you zoom right in, you'll actually get a clue as to what's in there. But, most car people will know. We're getting some new turbos. So, we had Garrett GTX, uh, sorry, we had Garrett GT 2860 RSs, so the old Magic Disco Potato, which I quite like, it's not quite a good turbo, they do a, a pretty good job, maximum horsepower, I think, off the top of my head, 360 horsepower, they reckon they'll do, I'm trying to do this one-handed, don't try and do this sort of thing one-handed, guys, um, and we were about there, depending on what your drivetrain losses are and all that sort of carry on. We were somewhere around 700 horsepower at the motor. It was 440 kilowatts at the hubs, is what we measured. Just checking, I'm not going to throw anything away. So whatever you want to have for your drivetrain losses, blah, blah, blah. About 700, so the turbos were about maxed out. And that's the performance we were getting from the car indicated that that was the case so I broke one I'll go into that later but that kind of happens some bits need some of those bits so and it was time for an upgrade anyway right so I could have replaced the core that was I think that's all that's in that box let's put it in stacking boxes now fragile it turned up upside down but never mind um, I could have just repaired the turbo that I damaged by replacing the core. It was a thousand bucks to do that, and the whole turbo is only worth sixteen hundred bucks for a new Garrett GT twenty eight sixty RS. I spoke with our mate Jason. He's been importing these Pulsar turbochargers for a little while. And recommended they'd be a pretty good option. Now they're frame interchangeable with the Garrett turbocharger, i.e. they are the same as the Garrett turbochargers and in fact the part numbers all line up. Uh, more trouble on Hamilton. Hope everyone's all right. Um, the part numbers are the same even. So what we've got here is a GTX 2860R. So these are rated at, that might need a little bit of a tidy up perhaps, I might flange match that to my ones. Uh, my flanges, these are rated at, uh, correct me if I'm wrong guys, I think it's 425 horsepower each, which takes us to a theoretical maximum where the turbo's say no more we cannot do no more um of 950 horsepower so that should be a little bit better than what we had oh look at that it's them narrow ones i thought these had anti-surge ports but not these ones that's okay oh lovely um certainly a lot better looking than the one that i broke hang on a second so, when you put a, a plastic blank, a bit like this actually, inside your turbo inlet there, to make sure you don't get any debris and stuff in there while you're working on the intake system, yeah, don't forget that you've done that. Uh, because, num, 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 oh dear. Oh dear. Hey, but this sort of thing happens. I've got no excuses really, I was... I, I put the blank, it's actually exactly the same as one of these that's got all these ball bearings and stuff in it. I'll put these down here for the long time so I can show you. This turbo's dead, I won't put it in the good one. I put that blank in there like that to make sure I wouldn't get any rubbish in this turbocharger. This exact turbocharger. Strangely enough, this one won't fit in here nicely, but it did fit anyway when it was in the car. Then I modified the intake system, slipped the intake system over the top, and went, that's awesome. Must have had a phone call or went off to lunch or whatever it was, came back, 
did not take the intake system back off and double check everything like I would normally do. Simply slipped the clamp over around the outside and did it up, leaving that in there. So first time I put the foot down, it happened down, so there was a little bit of lag, just for half a second, and then it cleared. Probably turned that on its side like that and sucked it in. Nom, 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 nom. Oh dear. Anyway, no excuses, but we're upgrading. And as you can see, apart from the fact they are clocked differently, that is very much the same as that. Not exactly the same. Similar. Similar enough, it's going to fit in the car without any significant modifications, which is awesome. So we get a power upgrade for minimal effort, relatively low costs compared to repairing that, which is a new core assembly because... They don't sell you just the wheel. You can buy billet wheels to go in here. They're 100 US dollars each. I think Mamba make them. So I could have done that. Meh. Whatever. Let's just put some new ones on. So let's clock these up. Get them bolted onto the car. Should be pretty much ready to go. Clocked it all up and everything. Forgot that I'd actually done a real fan dangle fancy mucked around bracket here. It's actually the mirror image of the original factory bracket uh, so it's pressed back the other direction to face in a different position and clock it and whatever so this is my second hand bracket here the brand new one can go with the second hand turbo and disappear with all that i'll put all that back together later on so we are ready to go and smash that in the car probably a good idea to check it's clocked correctly, build the other turbo up, or clock the other turbo, and set both wastegate actuators on the bench, because it's way easier than trying to do it in the car. Um, they don't have to be set at any specific pressure, as long as they're both the same. You don't want one opening a long way before the other. You get all sorts of issues trying to set your boost up in the car. So I'll test that's in the right spot, then we'll do that. Fast forward a little bit. Not sure if I'd showing you the noisy thing in the cavity back here put it in the other day both targes into their holes fit just like the original ones did right so because as i said earlier they're frame interchangeable or whatever so that is that all clocked and everything exact same as what the other ones were just trying to make up my mind whether i go fancy and get some v-band clamps and all that sort of carry on to go on the outlets and the inlets perhaps um it's possibly just extra weight and extra money and not really any performance gain at all we're not going to run mega boost maybe 20 psi probably no more than that uh, so we don't really need to go fancy but anyway um so just working on hoses so this is a new hose here oil feed hose but the old fittings with new olives in there um all the stuff's starting to look a little bit scratchy and old, but that's because it's done a bit of work. You won't see it anyway. Um, intercourse, it's here, as you know, so that disappears behind that anyway. So cosmetically, not a problem. Replacing the hoses, because that there thing there glows almost red. Well, this bit does. That's nearly glowing red hot when, um, when the car's on full power for anything more than a couple of quick squirts squirts so um although the teflon rated um teflon tef speak proper england although the teflon lined hoses can cope with pretty high temperatures we're seeing some extremely high temperatures in these areas here and as i've mentioned earlier heat shielding and stuff struggles to deal with it so let's just replace the oil hoses if they split open and spray oil hot oil onto glowing red hot things instant fire instant barbecue we don't like barbecues had a couple of those in this thing don't want more um actually i can show you something box of stuff right so this is all bits that's not a bit that goes on the car this is all bits that are going back on the car soon heat shielding notice that she's been getting real toasty that one's actually for the cooling line and the cooling line's fine it's got water inside it to keep it all good right the um some other things there's more heat shielding looking quite toasty as well the fire sleeve that was inside that 
Yeah, that's done. That was not enjoying the uh, tropical temperatures around our turbocharger. So this is why we're just redoing everything. And actually spent the money and got some. I know, I know the car's got speed flow stickers on it, but hey, these guys are in town. Um, got some proper stuff. This is rated at like 1100C radiant heat. So this is proper the stuff to do what we're doing. So we'll make some new hoses. He's old. Look, I made a mess of my bench. You saw earlier that was that, that was clean, wasn't it? But it's not now. I'll tidy up later. Uh, we'll make some new hoses so we don't have any problems. And we'll put some proper fire sleeve, heat sleeve, sorry, heat sleeve. And we'll get on with it. If I'm mucking up words and stuff, we've got two people in the house who've got that horrible cough that's going around, not COVID. The other one, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, a couple of hours of coughing every night. Where's he down after two or three weeks? So anyway, let's make some, this is brand new hose here, new hoses and carry on. Been mucking around sorting out the plumbing. Not the easiest subframe to get turbo drains out of, but that'll do. Bit of a, well, I mean, it looks like it's uphill, but it's not. Bit of a loop around there. Drive shaft pokes through this big hole here, which is much bigger than what it looks on camera. And um, oh, the side's actually a bit easier. Same drains and everything that I had on there before. Drains through there. Changed the water cooling lines around. Everything was running in awkward positions and stuff. I've ducked and dived and... Watch, I don't hit my head on something. Excusing my hand in the way there. Changed the position of this. Used to, used to be up here somewhere. So we've taken like two feet out of the lines by doing that. It's a few hundred grams. Shortens up the system, makes it better for flow and all that, so carry on. I'm going to work on my, they're not down pipes, they're up pipes, I guess. Work on the turbo exhaust flanges, which they're on the floor over there. I'm not going to show you the detail on that, people have already whinged about that, but I am going to do something about it this time. Um, haven't been too worried about it in the past. Time to go, I think. It's starting to rain. There's a helicopter flying around. Something's going down out there again. Hamilton's getting a bit dodgy. All new lines are all done for our oil system. Shifted those around as well. Hopefully something better than what I had. Not that we had any problems with it, but it'll be better. It's about us. I'm gonna go and get something very cool on Saturday morning and we should have a nice update for you with some more bling. Alright, cheers bike.